Is your Facebook live stream dying? Is it a ghost town? Nobody seems to show up anymore. Nobody's really talking or engaging. And you feel like, what am I doing even on this show? That's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. And I hope that you'll join us. My guest is Jenny Q. She's a longtime friend. She's a colleague. She's been through you know, sort of some of the ups and downs of live streaming, and she's made it out clean on the other side. She's going to be sharing some of her insider uh, thoughts. We're going to be having a conversation. This is the first time we've done an interview on this show, and we can't wait to get started. It's the business of live video, and I'm super glad that you're joining us today. If you're watching this on the replay, you may want to skip ahead a few minutes because we're going to hang out on the live stream. We're going to chat. We're going to welcome our audience. And we're going to sort of get into today's topic in just a little bit. But we like to enjoy the live streaming portion of this show. So if you want to skip ahead and just get right to the content, go ahead and do that now. Uh, what I want to do is bring uh, Jenny on and just say hi to those of uh, you who are out there watching us live today so jenny are you there come in come in uh we would love to to talk to you and while you're uh doing that let's bring the chat up um up on screen there we go look at that top to bottom how are you so my fancy friend? so fancy i'm doing so well thank you thank you thank you thank you for having me on i always enjoy sharing any type of space with you and so i'm really grateful to be here hi <laughs> Well, we have a great audience and they're just starting to show up. So I want to make sure that we give a chance to say hello to everybody, uh, starting with Carlos Zepeda, who is running the show from the back end. Glad to have you here. Krista Bovin, um, she is an art collector, an art teacher. Like she teaches you how to collect art. She's a live streamer. She's a video maker. Um, and I want you to know that, Jenny, so that you can kind of like get a sense, like as we start to talk about today's. Well, I want to jump in really quick as you're doing this. I actually used to live in Belgium. So yay. Uh, bonjour, madame. I, I, <laughs> uh, that's about it. Unless I can order some uh, frites or chocolate eclairs. Like, that's the extent of my French. <laughs> you know, you know so much more. You know so much more than me. Do you speak? Uh, do you speak any other languages? No, no, I don't. <laughs> I wish I did, though. I wish I did. Uh, Activate LA is in the house. What's up? Johnny Bean is out there. Fwop. Air 5 to you, my friend. Uh, we had a really, really big weekend this week. Consistent Ash is saying, how's it going, everybody? Um, I just got back from Video Marketing World. And did you hear about this conference, Jenny Q? Oh, of course. I watched the pictures that everybody oh, was okay. posting. Oh, huge it was a great it was a really great conference i wanted to share some pictures with you guys if i could i don't know no I don't, it looks like they're still in the cloud so i don't want to waste our time doing that today but we had a great event over at video marketing world and for those of you guys that don't know what video marketing world is it's a conference for business first video creators right and so it's largely someone that owns a business and is looking to make video for uh, for their business. So this is largely the audience you work with, right, Jenny? Yep, absolutely. So you you know that their needs are different, right, than the needs of of like a YouTuber who's trying to make money on views and and right. Oh yeah, their own uh, of their own show. But we talked a lot about the future, and we talked a lot about what's coming. And I got to tell you guys watching here today, there there's a lot you need to know about. And I think that if you know sort of where the momentum is then i think that you stand a really good chance for being successful in in the future uh we got juan santiago logging in uh, all in one social media is here uh so good to see you out there vet cloud gaming is here jenny you know we're gonna go into our topic in just a second today um is facebook live itself dying on the vine is your facebook live dying on the vine and how do you revive it but what do you see do you see uh, as the future of live streaming what do you see kind of coming around the bend well it's interesting you know i think that you said in the um description today is four years since facebook live started is that yeah, yeah that's crazy the the evolution has just been phenomenal so i think four years ago 
there was a huge differentiation between live streaming and video. And now we're just seeing them kind of merge, right? Yeah. So, so yes, live definitely still has its benefit. It, there are pros to it and we'll we'll get into that in a minute um but also we can't we can no longer i mean i wrote a book on live streaming leverage live streaming so you know i'm i'm all in on live streaming but we can't ignore video and recorded video and especially no. now with tiktok and reels like business owners need to be continually you know uh honing their video skills but the cool part is the basics remain yeah. the same yeah yeah. Yeah. So, I, I, I hope that we could talk about those things because I, I think that that we would sort of consider the basics different things. Not you and me per se, but different people would consider the basics. Sure. You know, like have you have you heard someone say, Oh, I, I just before I can go live, I just have to do this first. You know, <laughs> or, or before I can do this thing that I was sent here to do, I, I have to do this first. Right. You know, do you get that in your work? Oh, sure. Everyone gets stuck. Sometimes we do it to ourselves. Sometimes there are legitimate reasons. Uh, and that's that's what, what I think both of us help uh, business owners do is we help them figure out, is this really a reason to wait? Or no, let's just go ahead and push through because it's in taking the action yeah. that you go forward and you can see farther. And, and it, you can't really even start the process until you take action because once you take action, then you can make the course corrections that are really based on real time feedback that you're getting versus the story that you're telling yourself in your head. Yeah, sort of repeating over and, <laughs> and over again. And we've got Andre uh, Thomas logging in who's saying uh, Facebook is my main live streaming platform. So I'm definitely interested in this conversation. We're talking about is Facebook Live dead? Is, is your Facebook Live dead? dead and what what can you do to really revive and bring some new life uh into your live streaming platform our guest today is jenny q and we're going to be digging into this topic in depth in just you know a quick moment but i want to ask you guys watching us right now when we've got jerry here from let's talk stroke nelly gerlov is here by the way nelly uh danielle uh longtime friend and isn't it wonderful jenny to like be a part of this community and it's like we're friends like would you agree yeah. like oh totally know each other in the space yeah. danielle's a good uh good friend uh and it's so fun to see uh friends and colleagues uh log in gareth williams is talking about music copyright infringement has killed facebook live okay i love to hear that passion gareth tell us about your experience i want to hear from you guys in the comment area i want to hear like what is your experience being with facebook live because you're talking to two experts here today not just in the streams that we do, but we represent clients who stream. And we're able to glean from some of their experience uh, today. Kevin Colby is logging in. He's saying, wait, I thought I was your friend. No, sir, <laughs> you were wrong. We are brothers. We are far Aww. much more than friends, Kevin <laughs> Colby. We missed you at Video Marketing World uh, this year. Dean Linnell, uh, is logging in. He's saying, you know, like I, I've long, uh, I gave up on Facebook live last year. Tell me why uh, in, in the comment section, why you've given up on, uh, on Facebook live. And we'd love to hear from you guys today because, uh, we're going to go into this topic on is your Facebook live dead? I want to talk about, you know, the way Facebook live was the way it is today and where it's going. We didn't really plan a lot of content today. As you can tell, the format of our shows changed a little bit to get real and to get a little bit more raw with you. Um, so I think that's a good with that. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Let's do it. All right, great. So Carlos, if you could take the, the there we go. We'll just start on, on. Uh, uh, actually, no, let, go ahead and put it on me and then bring Jenny in when I say her name. Okay, all right, really good. So if you guys got questions, type them in, type your comments up if you want to get exposure. Like, I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear your deepest, darkest opinions, okay? All right, let's get going in five, four. Is Facebook Live dying? Is your Facebook Live dying? Let's face it, Facebook Lives are not performing the way that they used to be. And there's a lot of opinions on the matter. Did the algorithm change? Um, has some of the 
you know, the new truth uh, seekers or the truth uh, checkers uh, uh, system have anything to do with that? What about music and copyright infringement? How are all of those things affecting your Facebook Live? And is it even worth your time to keep going? That's what we're going to be talking about today. And we have a phenomenal guest. My good friend, Jenny Q, is logging in today. And she's going to be sort of walking us through her process. This is somebody who has been through the ups and downs of the live stream. And hopefully she'll appear on camera uh, any, any moment now. Thanks, Carlos, for, for bringing her on. Uh, Jenny Q has been in the live streaming game for quite some time. You and I have known each other for years and we've seen some of the, the rise of meerkat. We've seen some of the, the, the rise of YouTube live and Facebook live, and we both sort of been through it. So Jenny, as we get started today, talk to me about what's the biggest problem. Why are people even saying is Facebook live dead? Well, a lot of reasons. First of all, <laughs> and we won't go into this part, but just Facebook itself has has you know kind of been through the ringer in the past year so so we won't go there but even so when you compare the views which is one of the metrics that people use yeah, yeah when you compare views now that are organic compared to when facebook live started and remember back when facebook live started uh, we were streaming on other platforms and we kind of hopped over to Facebook Live. Yeah. And I even had Facebook Live's first variety show. I claimed the title. Nobody's challenged me. I'm sticking with it. And, um, you know, it was so new and so novel. And and people were just like, what is going on? And, yeah. and you would come out with your shows that were so different. And, and people just were fascinated. And then as people like you and I started teaching others how to live stream, we kind of got into overwhelm. So two things happened during that. There were more creators, but also Facebook changed their algorithm. Yes. And they, they stopped giving priority to Facebook Live. So those of us who were live streaming back then, we were used to views that were organic and just kind of like, you know, given to us. Like, you know, all we had to do was show up. Well, it, we got stuck in this this vanity metric that really yeah. had nothing to do with marketing and conversion. Yeah. It was just making you know stroking our egos. I mean, I'm I'm you know I'm guilty of it as well. Uh, but that doesn't mean that live video, when done well, when done with keeping up with the trends and what people actually want, that yeah. doesn't mean that it is not effective for building relationships and converting yeah. clients. Yeah. You know, this was a big, a big point at Video Marketing Worlds uh, this last weekend in Dallas, Texas. And if you guys aren't aware of Video Marketing World, you may want to put it on your calendar for next year. Videomarketing.world. Live stream was a big part of the conversation because, you know, two years ago, I was doing a show with Scott Ayers and we were easily getting a hundred live viewers per episode. Yep. Easily. Uh, and, and this was a show that didn't exist before, before we produced it. Okay. They hired me to produce a show they had never had before we produced it. We built that show to a hundred live viewers inside of a year. And we had repeat a hundred viewers. We had some shows at 300, one, the best show at 500 live viewers. Now, where did that go? You know, all of a sudden, and I feel like it was a little bit before COVID that the algorithm started to change, but it didn't change for everybody. Okay, friends of mine, the, they have a Disneyland live stream and their Facebook live stream is their number one source of income. So why is it that a channel like that can do well but some of our business channels, right? Like how to help with your insurance or, or look at my trinkets for sale or my tech live stream show, you know, where I'm talking about tech products and whatnot. Why aren't those making, making it? And let's, let's maybe start, start the conversation there. You know, why, why do some people make it on Facebook live and some people don't? Yeah. Well, I mean, if we could crack that code, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I, I want to bring us back though, to, define what's making it like what yeah. does that look like for each person i know that for my uh, clients that i coach 
you know, the professionals, their CPAs, their attorneys, their, um, you know, chiropractors, and, and they don't need to have 500 concurrent viewers. What they need is to build relationships and build trust and get people to pick up the phone or click the email button and call them. And we we're looking for conversion. If we're talking about business owners, that's what matters, right? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Really and good. so let's make sure we are defining what making it means for our live streams. And you start with that intention and you start with that goal and then making it has a very different thing. We're, we're so stuck on views and I'm not, I mean, everybody wants views, but if you're not attracting the right people who are going to end up buying your products or service, what, yeah. is, what, what good does it do? Yeah. Okay. That's big because I'll tell you guys, I, I really like getting views. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to hear from you out there. I know Desiree is watching. Um, I know uh, Renato De Vida just came in. Uh, Jeremy Vest is out there, my man, Jay Vest, who who is the uh, one of the brilliant minds behind Video Marketing World. You know, I really like to get the views because to me, it tells me that people are responding to my content in in a way that has triggered the algorithm. Some, right? Because in order to get views, you have to get impressions. You have to get into news feeds. So, so people liked you enough to get into the news feeds and like, what else, what else do you measure? Now I have an idea of what you're going to say, but I, I want you to tell me then like, how, how do you measure the success of your Facebook live stream? If you're not looking at views? Yeah. Well, uh, if you have a call to action, that's an easy way to track it. Yeah. Right. And I also want to bring up, and so my clients also, when they get their, when their clients call, they ask, how did you find us? Okay. I watch your videos. I mean, that's easy. Track it, track it, track it, track every single metric you can. Um, but what's really important too, when you're talking about live streams, Owen, is the reason live video wins, in my opinion, over recorded video is you build the no like, and trust factor. Yeah. So much faster because it's not a matter of if something goes wrong on your live stream, it's a matter of when. when. And then people get to watch you in real time. They know it's not edited. They know that they're getting the real Owen right now. They're getting the real Jenny Q right now. A comment comes up. Maybe it's distracting to me. Maybe I will like even uh, before, you know, when we were in the, the pre-show portion and somebody logged on from Belgium. And then I, you know, I said, oh, I used to live in Belgium. And I, I very poorly said hello in French, you know. Uh, you know, so that's real. We wouldn't have that in a recorded video. Yeah. Okay. And so, so remember, so those are the key points. And then the, uh, another key point is the repurpose value of okay. your live stream is really Super where the gold big. is. Super big. And that's, you know, I think that's kind of one of the, the big things we had to think about the future is that like your live stream is not just your live stream. It's the repurposed version of that live stream so how many of you uh gareth are you live are you repurposing kevin colby are you repurposing uh desiree desiree is answering all the questions right by the way but it's not fair because desiree is kind of a pro she kind of knows this stuff but super glad that so you guys make sure that you're following her uh over at all in one social media you know let's let's talk about um uh s some of those things in terms of you, you know how do you do that then? Like yeah. how, how do you become uh, a real person? Because let me tell you guys something right now with me, with me personally, um, one of my closest, dearest friends passed away uh, within the last 24 hours. And, and I'm telling you that because we still had a show to do today. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you, you know, Victor would have wanted me to do the show. Victor would have said, Hey, I'm, don't worry about me. You know, I'm, I'm dancing in heaven. Like you, you get your show done with. And so I'm, I'm, I share that with you so that you guys understand that I'm come, I'm in a place where I'm actually putting on a little bit of a show because I'd rather be with my family and, 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 and mourning over that. But I share that with you in an effort to share a part of my life with you that hopefully strengthens our bond and our, our relationship, you know, because I don't want to come at you like this corporate figure who, who has to be perfectly polished all the time. In fact, we changed the whole format of this show today to be a little bit more real and raw and authentic.
But how do we quantify that, Jenny Q? Like, what are some of the ways that we can be authentic so that we get that relationship, which gets us into more news feeds and algorithms? Mm -hmm. Well, first, I want to say I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And and this is, you know, talking about being vulnerable and sharing and being authentic. Um, that's kind of my wheelhouse. As you know, I've recently added on to what I'm doing. It's not really a pivot because I'm still doing live streaming. I'm still doing marketing. I'm still doing CMO. What I've added on is a podcast where it's called Being Seen and it's all about being vulnerable. And it's where I go in and I share my story. My first episode is, and I'll get back to your question. This all does loop together. Oh, it's good. <laughs> yeah. But my first episode, I actually brought on my counselor from 2009, where I shared with her my entire life story. And for the first time in my life, and it was a you know, traumatic childhood, which many of us had. And, and for the first time in my life, I felt seen. Hmm. And what happened as a result to that, a result of that moment and the healing of the shame that came after that was I lost half my body weight. I wrote a best-selling book on live streaming. I went from $15 an hour as an admin to a chief marketing officer of a tech company. And yeah. I only share that because it's in the story of sharing the vulnerability and being vulnerable that others who might also be struggling can have hope. Now, what happens on live streaming when we're sharing our stories and we're being vulnerable and we're opening up We've been kind of force fed, be vulnerable, be authentic, show who you really are. But I would add a caveat to that. I would say be strategically vulnerable. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, because what we don't want to do, imagine if I had just shared the story about my counselor's office and it's still so raw for me that I'm on here crying. Now, suddenly the viewers have to take care of me. There's no lesson for anybody, right? And so be strategically vulnerable with what you share. Make sure it's in alignment with your business message mm -hmm. and only share it after the healing so that you're really sharing the lesson, yeah, not the rawness. Uh, that's really good. Um, and, and I think that, and again, circling back, guys, we're talking about Facebook Live. And, and the reason that we're not seeing the views that we used to see, we've seen an algorithm change, yes. But we've also seen, as Kevin Colby says here, guys, I'm walking you through this logic here, that anyone can stream nowadays. It's not the big show it used to be. It's like, oh, I got a Facebook Live show. It's like, oh, really, you do? Yeah, I got a Facebook Live show. I got three Facebook Live shows, <laughs> right? What's standing out and what's triggering the algorithm now is the human component. Yes. You know, and we talk about vulnerability, but here's the thing. You sell insurance or you have a gaming channel or you have a music channel. You know, I think music, maybe Gareth can comment on this, might be a little bit easier to emote. But in, in terms of being vulnerable, I as a male, I hear that and I, I hear like sad story. Um but then you talk about tying it into your content. Agree with you 100%. I feel like that's that's the hard part. Desiree, great question, by the way. Uh, uh, your advice, like how do you how do you share a personal thing mm -hmm. while maintaining a brand message? Well, we don't want to get hung up on sad story, right? Vulnerable can just be opening up a part of your life that you typically wouldn't expect from a specific business owner. So let me go there for a minute and talk about one of my clients who's an attorney and, you know, um, th 30 years as an attorney. And it's only recently while we've been working together that he now shares stories about his family or their vacation or, you know, he has a regular live stream that he does weekly, but then we do a pattern interrupt with him just on his mobile device to get people's attention and to connect with him. If there's a news story that comes up that really touches his heart, he'll go on and just give personal commentary. You don't have to say, you know, um, <laughs> when I was when I was a kid, I was beaten. You don't have to go yeah. there, right? Yeah. Uh, by the way, I wasn't beaten. I feel like I need to. Yeah, I know. Now I it's wasn't like, beaten when I was a child. <laughs> clarity, mom. 
Quick clarity, mom. Uh, stone <laughs> coat countertops. I see you there, brother. Hey, and uh, Stone Coat, by the way, has a fantastic YouTube channel. I would love to be interviewed by you. Why don't you reach out to us? Info at the video spot dot net. And um, uh, we can set that up. Really great to have you here. Thanks for stopping by. We're talking about Facebook Live. Is Facebook Live dying or is it you? Is it the way you're presenting? <laughs> it, like, is it, are you boring people? Is it just all business? You know what I mean? Are yeah, you focused, yeah. focused on the numbers? So we've got someone here saying Facebook is over. And I think that this is kind of the uh, prevailing thought. I, we had another comment by by Gareth that said that um, is um, is Facebook Live dying because of uh, copyright infringement? Let me just ask you the question right up. Uh, is Facebook Live a dying platform that we should run from? I think that depends. Yeah, I think that depends. It depends on where your ideal client is hanging out. Oh my gosh, that's really good. Mm -hmm. If your ideal client is still hanging out on Facebook, then do Facebook Absolutely, Live. Absolutely, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. You've got to really think about what that that person wants to hear. Yep. You know what I mean? Like when you guys, Kevin Colby, Nikki Barnes, Stone Coat is out there, Elizabeth Ann, when you guys contribute to the conversation and you email me and you tell me what you want to see or you tell me what your struggles are or you're talking to me in the chat area about your experience, then like we know – or at least we have an idea of, of what we can do for this show to serve you. Cause at the end of the day, we're service providers. And now right. I'm, now I'm just getting, I have to own it. I'm getting the, I'm getting the giggles here over Kevin's comment. <laughs> T-shirtable. It totally is. At yeah. least it's tweetable, Kevin, at least please tweet it. I think what Kevin's, I think Kevin listens to the show and, and makes t-shirts while. <laughs> so smart. And then. And then, and I'll tell you this, uh, over at Video Marketing World this weekend, Elysia Way did a musical performance and he was wearing a Kevin Colby t-shirt. Brilliant. Brilliant. I want, it's, if Kevin, if you do create that t-shirt, send me the link. I need to buy one. <laughs> it's super good. We got a great question in here coming from Kylie Ogden. Um, this is uh, an interesting question. Uh, Jenny, I'll kick it to you first and then maybe I'll, I'll answer right back. Go ahead and. Throw it back up there, Carlos, if you can, from Kylie Ogden. She's asking, should a handmade product be live on YouTube? Jenny Quinn, your thoughts. Uh, I think that's a great question, and I think it goes right back to it depends. Uh, it depends. Is your audience hanging out there, and are you getting conversions from it? And if yeah. you're not getting conversions from the live stream when it's live, are you getting it on the replay? Yeah. It's, it's all about getting it out there, testing it, collecting the data, and then making course corrections. Yeah, I think that's really good. And, you know, because of YouTube's evergreen nature, I I would absolutely live stream on YouTube a handmade product with links to purchase the product. I mean, I don't know if it's like you make one type of thing or you make lots of different types of things. Like Danielle has a homemade product, but – she can customize it per order. So it's, you know, it's a little bit different, but I, I still think Danielle, she knows I've been telling her to do that. But like that replay, that repurpose value, I, you know, with a, a company like Restream, we're using Restream right now to broadcast this whole thing. So you guys see me sort of like, you know, pressing different buttons and moving around the screen and, and questions are coming on and off. All of that's done with Restream and you guys can check it out on your own time at epiclivevideo.com if you need a software for this. What I want to encourage you to do is that we use Restream for live streaming. We use it for webinars and we use it to repurpose our recordings so that we can get the good stuff on our social media channels. Okay. Uh, now, Stone Coat is bringing up. Uh, so, yes, I do think that you need to live stream your handmade product. And I before, think that before you move on, I have something to add, but go ahead. Yeah. Joe, I was going to say, look, with the holidays coming up right now, um, you need to be live streaming for Black Friday for. Um, uh, the holidays coming up and, and getting ready for that. Yes. And, and be everywhere. Like it, I can't say it enough. You've got to just get out there and collect the data. And I want to add this in a lot of people ask the question, should I fill in the blank? Could it, you know, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Instagram, whether I don't, you know, whatever, what is the most important thing in your live streams 
is the energy behind it. So is Ooh. it fun for you? Really good. And that's one of my favorite questions that I ask my clients who are professionals and they have, you know, all this experience and, and they, they say, should I do this? Should I do this? Should I do this? Should I do this? Should I live stream here? Should I create this video? And I'm like, let me ask you a question. What's the most fun? Yeah. And it stops them in their track and they're like, is that our new metric? I go, that is absolutely our new metric because it is your energy that you bring to any modality. I don't care if it's blog posts. I don't care if it's tweets. I don't care if it's live video, right? If your energy and your passion are there and you're having fun, that's the most attractive thing you can do. Yeah. Now I want to talk about, I want to talk about how to have fun when you have a product to sell. Let's come back to that, but let's go to some of our questions right now. Um, Desiree is asking, Facebook reach is so hard for pages. Uh, groups and profile is where I get engagement. Jenny, what's up with that? Why is it that pages, groups, profiles, like walk us through the, the differences there? Well, I'm not going to pretend to know the algorithm of Facebook because they continue to change. But what I can say is groups are always going to perform better because people have opted in. People have raised their hands that I want to be a part of what's going on here. Yeah. And you have already built, well, if, if you're doing it and you're engaged, you've built a relationship with these people and they're more interested in what you have to say. Remember, this all comes back to no like and trust. And if it's your group and you're adding value, then people are going to want to know what you're saying. And yes, they are going to want to know what you're selling as well because they've opted in to be a part of your community. Yeah, really good. Richard Huntington uh, is asking, when will custom thumbnails on Facebook gaming be fixed? They've not worked since late last year. You know, that that's too bad. We were having problems with thumbnails, a, you know, a year ago, but that got fixed pretty quickly. If you're not, Richard, already using Restream to stream to Facebook gaming, I may encourage you to look at that. The API, the way that it's connected, overrides Facebook's in internal settings and might help you get those uh those thumbnails uh fixed but we've 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 been pretty good with with thumbnails for the last um little little while so um stone coat is saying facebook is so far from over people spend money on that platform it's the new craigslist um yes. you know, i don't know if you saw it but js also said that he's heard so many things uh that are dead that he still makes money off of radio and he said something else, Good. right? There's always somebody who's still using it. You just need to know, is that you where your ideal client is hanging out? Yeah. Now let's talk about how you show up for them, you know, is, is another thing because I, I, I agree with stone coat uh, countertops that uh, Facebook is far from over. It, it's all, it's going to be like radio. It's going to be a part of our lives for a long time. It's just at varying, varying levels. And I think that some people are going to find a lot of value in groups. And I think other people are going to, you know, go live from their pages and then boost the post, uh, to retarget into a funnel. And I think other people are going to go live and like, like the Disney vlog, Mm -hmm. and and they're going to get people donating stars to them, right? I don't know if you guys know that Facebook Live has stars that you can donate, and they equate into dollar amounts. Um, Stone Coat is selling product. I mean, he's selling product, and I think probably doing even, even more influencer stuff. So it's going to be around for a while, but we you have to stand out more, you know, and sort of like, unique is the new you, right? It's the new, it's the, I mean, it, maybe it's not new. It's just, I'm just kind of being trite. Here's what I mean. We've all worked so long on being polished and I'm trying to like, we've all worked so, um, so hard on being polished for the last couple of years. And now well, I because think it worked. It worked. Right. It was like, Oh, look at what Jenny can do and look at what Owen can do. Uh, and, and these different things. But now it's kind of like w we've been separated from each other for a year and a half, 400 yeah days i gotta tell you the energy at the video marketing world conference was just on point it, people just wanted to be there there was hugs and tears and all these you, you know you, you know wonderful things um and nikki barnes is saying service marketing is is a bit harder uh, than selling a tangible product 
but Facebook is so personal that it works. That's what I'm my long winded way of getting to. Um, it's easy to get up on camera and be like, Oh, you gotta be more you, you gotta be more unique. You gotta be, you gotta like emphasize who you are. But Jenny, like, how do you do that? What is your process or what can you help advise us to be like, how do you get the you out of you? <laughs> That's another that, good teacher. So the you out of you and onto the screen. Yeah, or yeah, 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 yeah. at least communicate yeah. it to your yeah. to your audience, you know? Yeah. So it's funny, uh when when we were live streaming back in the day with Meerkat and Periscope and Blab, yeah. right? Uh Brian Fanzo would say if you suck offline, you're gonna suck online. Yeah, it's, it's true. Yeah. But the good news is even if you suck offline and you bring it online, you still have your people out there. So don't let that stop you. But I yeah. can definitely give some tips on how to be more uh, present and authentic and more relatable when you are on screen. And it really has to do with taking away distractions, right? Okay. So you want to make sure that your background is the way that people expect you to show up. Yeah. So... Owen, your background is very different than my background because we have different, uh, yeah. different uh, demographics that we work with, right? Yeah. Somebody who's somebody who's doing a cooking demonstration, they should probably be in a kitchen and not sitting right. in my background, right? Okay, so that's one. The lighting is very important. People need to see your face. They don't want to be distracted. The audio cannot be emphasized enough. It's got to be good. And this. Pro and this is probably the most important thing to be relatable. And it is the hardest skill to learn when you're doing video. And it is looking into the lens of the camera. It's especially difficult when you're on screen with someone else because you feel like you're being rude by not looking at them. But I'm going to just do a quick demonstration on how valuable it is because <laughs> oh, you're hardly distracting at all. But listen, so here, so here, okay, so here's the quick demonstration. So right now, and this whole time that I've been talking, I've been looking at the lens of the camera. Yeah. And my assumption is that you feel like I'm talking straight directly to you. Now I'm going to read the comments. Now I'm actually, to me, it feels like I'm paying more attention to you because I'm looking over at the comments right. and I'm reading, but I just lost connection with you. And so there, the, there goes the, um, you know, the, the relatability. Now, when you're running a show, this has been a delight for me to be on here with Owen and his producer running the show. Cause I literally just get to be here and hang out when you're running your own show. It's finding the balance between the two, because if you're doing a live stream, there's really nothing that even comes close to like what Owen is so masterful at engaging with the viewers while they're live. They are trading their very precious time to be with you. That's true. Yes. So call them out by name. Nobody, I mean, everybody likes to hear their name, right? Share their comment when it's relevant. Acknowledge them, see them and validate them. And that's, that's building the relationship. That's what I want to do more on this show. I really do. I feel like, like this show, uh, we have objectives that we need to satisfy. And I think that's good. It keeps, it keeps us on point because, you know, if you're one degree off, you're going to do 12 episodes of a show that you're like, oh, my gosh, we really just got farther and farther out out there. Yeah. Um, but we have goals on the show and, and, and we we want to sort of stick to those goals. But sometimes I can feel like between all like the like I, I'm over here with my hand, like pressing this, you know, this little guy. And it's like yeah. between sort of like pressing these and, and getting, you know, this on the screen and like some of this stuff on the screen and playing <laughs> you know, sound effects and whatnot. Uh, it, it could be, you know, I get so focused on the choreography mm -hmm. of the dance that I, I forget to come in here and talk to Edward J. Weinberg. Really, it's Ed who is out there or uh, Nikki Barnes, who is saying Owen has a natural swagger that you can't, can't help but want to learn him and what he is about. I hope so. I hope that's true. And I appreciate that. You know, like I, I can honestly tell you that my. My goal is to be more me. Uh, and so, you, you, you know, through sort of like high school in the early years after, you know, we're all 
sort of um, find like, you know, kind of healing. I think. My point is, is like I, I thought I was annoying, right? It's like, oh, I'm the loud guy, you know, and 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 these other kinds of things. And I learned, like, hey, no, you're a boisterous sort of like outgoing person. So be that, and if people don't like it, they can go somewhere else. Absolutely. You know. And you know what I mean? Oh, and I want to say, I mean, we've met in person, and you are exactly in person who you are on screen. Yeah, thank if you. It had, if it had been different. It, there would have been a huge disconnect and, you know, I, I don't, I, I, it just, it just, it just took the trust up, you know, 10 notches because you are who you are. Right. There yeah. was a time that I was at an event. Now this may or may not convince you to do it. I don't know. But when, uh, I was at a big gala, um, when I lived in Boise and this woman who I never met in person, um, she came running. It felt like she was running slow motion across the room when she saw me, right? Yeah. And we're in our gowns and everything. And she comes running and she gives me a huge hug. And she said, I feel like I know you. You must be doing something right. So I'm not sure if that's a plus for you or not, but that's the reaction that you want. You want people to know you and know who you are. No, it's true. And you know what? That's what it was like at Video Marketing World, um, seeing old friends who I've met on video. But then also seeing people like Rich Cardona, who I don't know if you guys know Rich Cardona, definitely somebody worth following, um, uh, met him for the first time. And there was this sense of uh, like, I know you and and not only. Oh, look at this. We got uh, uh, Jason just logged in from Ham Radio 2.0 uh, 2 uh, friends from uh, the video, the video marketing world conference. You know, the thing is. When when those I. I told someone, a conference owner, uh, that they need to look at Rich Cardona for their next conference. I was like, this guy's uh -huh. great. Uh -huh. He really knows his stuff. He's polished. He's young. He's exciting. Because even though it was the first time I seen him speak, I I knew what his video game was like. I, oh. you know, I, like. I knew what he was like on video. He's reliable. He's consistent. And I feel sort of like under, maybe underrepresented. It's a lot like my boy, uh, Roger, Roger Wakefield. You know, I knew him on camera for a long time before I met in person. Now, what's my point in all that? My point in all that is that, you, you know, the reason you're not converting people on your YouTube channel, the reason that you're not getting more viewers on your Facebook Live, and the reason that you feel like Facebook Live is dying and it's not working is because you don't have a connection with your audience, you know, and that connection you know, is built through these personal sort of milestones that you walk through with your viewers. The big message of Video Marketing World and even Vid Summit, which was the week before that, was varying up your content topics a little bit. Uh, it's, it's, it's doing your how to do this and why you should do that. But inside of those videos, you're sharing your, your love for music by saying things, simple things, right? Like, you know, um, I don't know. You know, you say, "Hey, my my favorite song is is uh, Hotel California by the Eagles." You know, so it reminds me of that song where he says da 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 da, and you're just sharing your your love for music through that story. Or, for example, in my in my video presentations, I'll do um, uh, '80s TV throwbacks, or or like I'll say, "You messed that one up," like Daniel Larusso, and sort of like only the people that know who Daniel Larusso is, like they connect with that. They see that personal side. Owen's a media geek. Um, so well, and that can go, that can go anywhere though. Oh, and that can be anything that you love. And yeah. what, and the goal is to have people know you so well that when they see that item, they think of you. Yeah. Right. So I can't tell you, like, I'm obsessed with coffee. It is ridiculous. I go to sleep at night. I'm not, I wish I was exa exaggerating. I go to sleep at night just thinking, oh, I get to wake up and have coffee. I'm so excited. I, same. Yeah. And so, okay. So it's not just me. Same thing. So, but people will send me memes and, you know, they'll tag me. And if they're getting coffee at Dutch Bros, which is one of my favorite places, they'll take a picture oh, yeah. and they send it to me, you know, and that's the connection. They're connecting with you over something outside of what you do for work. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. And, and, you know, I'm finding that that's the big difference. Yeah. So, you, you know, we, we didn't talk about my cancer diagnosis for six months. Yeah. Um, number one, because we needed our own time to mourn and, and Absolutely. We, you said like, you don't just 
when something happens, you don't just talk about it. You have to kind of like, what am I getting? Like, what's our message through all this? And, mm -hmm. and, and um, that was a big, uh, a, a big part of it. But sharing that with people um, on our, on beatcancerwithme.com. And even just, as I mentioned it, like on this show and on other things that I do, nobody comes up to me at the conference and says, dude, your video about like YouTube thumbnails was exceptional. Right. People come up to me and they say, how are you feeling? Or they say, yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Oh, so, and we talk about not the business that I'm in. Um, oh, I'm getting chills. I'm just getting chills. Yeah. You no, know, but we talk about the thing that's about me. Mm -hmm. Now, does it turn into business? Well, I can tell you right now that our, our numbers are, are up and, you know, no one's ever said, Hey, Owen, thank you for sharing your story about cancer. Can I enroll in your program? You know what I mean? But the people that enroll in my program, um, have been watching me for weeks and they yes. know, they know what to expect from me. You know what I'm saying? A hundred percent. I know what you're saying. You know, it's, it goes back to, uh, the no like, and trust factor. People do business with those they know, like, and trust. That's just yeah. the way it is. Yeah. So, yeah. So, oh, and they may be watching you. They may connect with you over your, um, you know, your beating cancer journey. They may watch that. And they also know that you coach on video. Suddenly they, uh, realize they need to be doing video for their business. Who's, who's the first person they're going to think of? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Answer patient. Or they're going to be like, well, maybe he won't be around much longer. So I'll find <laughs> kidding guys. That's a joke. It's a joke. I, for those of you that are at V at video marketing world, I did make, I did make that joke. I am a cancer comedian. We do cancer comedy. Go to becancerwithme.com uh, and check it out. And here's the thing because cancer patients need to laugh. We need to laugh. Laugh brings joy. Joy beats cancer. And there's science behind that. We'll get into that later. David Tucker is saying vulnerability equals trust. I couldn't agree more. Why? Why does it equal trust? And then we'll get into y'all's questions. We do, we have questions. I want to go to those. But why does vulnerability equal trust? And how can we avoid sort of the I'm going to tell, oh, hi, everybody. Welcome to my show about um, insurance and why you should buy insurance. Also, my mom died when I was 12. How do we avoid like being yeah. fake, vulnerable? You know what I mean? So, you know, you you've done this already in this show. And I've seen you do it often. And I think I've done it as well. And it's through sharing of stories. We are biologically hardwired to learn and connect through stories. When you think back, you know, when you were a child, your grandma, when she was telling you about your family history, she did not pull out a, you know, a, a whiteboard or a blackboard or whatever the case may be and start diagramming out where the family came from. She would tell you story after oh, story so after story, right? Yeah. And so we we all want to, to hear the story. And as we're hearing the story, we become a part of the story. We learn and we connect and we build trust. And so... So that's one part of it. Another part of it is just con being consistently congruent with who you are every time you show up. Oh, so big. Yeah. So, so big. yeah. And so, you know, I, I, vulnerability has gotten this huge, uh, like it's just the big word um, with Brene Brown. Um, and her research is compelling and you cannot deny how powerful vulnerability is, not just for business and building relationships, but for our own healing and our own, oh. our own progression in life. Right. Oh my gosh. But here's the thing, Owen, we can't force it. We have to just be authentically us. Yeah. And, and it's when we force it that we come off as disingenuous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I would say there's also in the beginning an element of forcing it or what I would say discipline, right? Just because it doesn't feel right doesn't mean you shouldn't still try to do it. Danielle is saying people are tired of the picture perfect people. How many of you guys out there watching right now are, are consciously over polish? You're over all the polish that you're seeing. 
Um, I know that I'm consciously aware of it, and that's kind of why I like uh, – I watch a lot of Mr. Beast with my kids. It's raw, and it's very real, and it's very mindless. I don't need – it's playtime. I'm not like watching Mr. Beast like, oh, what can I learn from Mr. Beast today? Like it's more like this is mindless, and it's fun, uh, and it's this kid having fun, and it makes me have fun, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, how many of you guys are tired of the picture perfect sort of sort of thing? Because for me, the reason I wanted to kind of jump in there is, you know, as I'm going through this this healing journey on my on my own, um, I'm finding it's a lot for me to keep up. It's a lot of weight on my chest to try to be so polished and be everybody's perfect. It's like some days I want to just come up here and be like, hey, um, I'm a wreck today. And but we're going to get through it together, you know, yep. on, on this show. And so I think that's something to, to think about. We got to go to some questions. And, and I say we got to, because I just really love Jenny, just going deeper down the rabbit hole with you. Uh, I hope that this show is valuable to you guys today. I want to start with this one. Facebook is throttling reach. Our broadcasts have improved immeasurably new hardware and great content. <clears throat> Facebook is not rewarding content creators. You know, I, I wish I knew who it was. We, we probably know each other. But because you're in a Facebook group, I can't see who was asking this question. I, I don't believe Facebook is throttling reach outside of your content. Like in your thumbnail, um, like if you're doing, if it's a gun, um, if it's uh, like a shirtless child, um, if it's, the, these are like warning signs. So I don't know what your content is. Um, I don't believe Facebook is throttling reach. I believe that the algorithm is heavily geared to favor entertainment. Yes, one hundred percent. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So at Vid Summit, the word was Facebook will be Facebook Watch in the next couple of years. So I would encourage all of you guys to think about this: How do you make your content more entertaining? And then how can you add? And I'm not talking about being wacky. I'm just saying. You, you know, can you add an entertainment factor in somewhere? We all could. You just got to figure out how and where. Okay. Um, and if you want some coaching on that, reach out to me. Okay. Info at the video spot.net. We can talk about a strategy. But the other part of that is repurposing. You know, it's going live with the guest, but spending five minutes of that live, making an, uh, an entertaining piece that's two minutes long. Uh, entertaining piece. A quick meme, a quick tip that can go on Facebook Live. So you're using your live stream to repurpose a small segment that can take advantage of the booming part of Facebook, which is Facebook Watch. Facebook Watch is booming right now. It's just like on Instagram. I'm going to quiz you. I know I should have asked you first. Do you know what is booming on Instagram right now? Well, I'm assuming Reels. Reels. Reels (laughs) is booming right now. So the thing is, you don't go onto Instagram complaining about IGTV. You go on Instagram saying, all right, Reels is the place. It's just like Facebook. You don't go and say, oh, well, Facebook Live is throttling me or Facebook Live sucks. You go, okay, Facebook Watch is a thing. How can I use my talent for live streaming to take advantage of Facebook Watch? You know, either way, you're building an audience. And and I think that those are all positive things. So I want to answer the throttling because I don't, they could be, guys. I, you know, Facebook is very secretive and rude and corrupt. Okay, like. They're, they're, they could be throttling you. I don't think so. I think it's just so heavily like leaning towards kind of whack-a-mole entertainment and who can throw paint on who that it's very hard for how to sell insurance or look at my Etsy product to break through. I think what Jenny is saying, you don't need to break through. You need like a solid base of people that love you and your business will thrive. Is that a good way to summarize? Yeah, totally. It's, it's about the quality and it's everything you just said. If you structure your live stream with the intention of repurposing, then you can do exactly what you said. Also, queue up the questions if you have a guest or if it's just you. Structure your live stream so that you're queuing up the questions. You're, cre- you're intentionally creating sound bites from yeah. your yeah. video. What? Yes, agreeing 100%. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? And so so let's let's take that up even one more notch. Make sure your questions are SEO rich. Ooh. Right? 
Yeah. So you're doing your SEO research before you're even putting your live stream together. And now you have your clips that are two to three minutes long. Yeah. That are searchable. People are already searching for it. Answer yeah, it for them. And they're short enough for people to uh they're short enough for people to watch. So let's answer some questions here. Okay. I know we had uh there we go. Melissa Walsh is saying, do you think it's better to build your brand on Facebook business page or a business profile? Seems like a lot more reach on the profile, Jenny Q. Oh, well, now you get into <laughs> what's allowed on Facebook in terms of service and uh, how far are you willing to push it? Um, so, you know, Facebook says that you can build your business on a page, on a business page. Do people follow that? No. Can you create the content on your business page and then share it on your personal profile? Yes. Um, I, 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 guess I'm, I guess I don't know what to say here. I, I personally, to... let me just say it this way. I, yeah. I would never um, uh, recommend to a client that they put their business on their personal profile. Yeah, I agree. Your, your business profile is used to bring attention to your business page. And, and like right now I'm streaming on my profile and my page, right? And I'm doing that so that we, we can maximize sort of our exposure while I'm building up my, my, my Facebook page because we do run ads. So on Facebook, if you're going to build a brand, you have to ask yourself, Melissa Walsh, is it, is it a business you're building or is it like a personal brand, right? Like, are, are you wanting to be a thought leader? Because if so, um, no, I take it back. You're, you're going to need a page. You're, you're going to need a business page and there will be a time at which they they just cut your, your reach on your Facebook profile. Yeah, you would just be, or cut your profile or just delete you. They want you spending money on, on ads. Yes, and so at the end of the day, but you use your profile. So to bring people, to make them aware of it so that when you want to run ads, you know, you have them in, in sort of your, your, your thing. And, um, uh, Melissa, if you're not already, join us in in um, the Facebook group. And uh, maybe Carlos could put our Facebook group link down there. Uh, we talk about these things. Next question, Elizabeth Ann is saying, what are some tips for repurposing a live where you're selling your products? I do uh, these types of live once a week, and I'd like to repurpose it. Jenny Q, your thoughts? Mm, great, great question. I think that it, what I would do is I would take a specific product Take the clip from that, promote it and put it everywhere. Have it be under a minute, put it on Instagram, put it on, you know, and have a link just to that one product. They can buy just that one product yeah. so that you're not taking them to the whole shop. It's just like, Hey, yeah. you like this product? Buy it here. Yeah. And you know what I, I would recommend Elizabeth? I haven't seen your live stream show, like treat your live stream show, like a, like a QVC show where maybe one live stream show, you do three video or like three products. Let's just say hypothetically three products, but you introduce those products um, the same way where you do a two minute summary and then you do more of a five or 10 minute sort of like, let's really look at this and you repurpose the summary. So you say, you know, like, look, everybody today, we got this, this great little handy dandy remote control. Here's all the best features, two minutes. And then after that, you say, okay, let's really go into this now. Really take a look at, we show bigger, longer examples. So you come out of every live stream show with like three repurposable, you know, product summaries uh, that, that can now be used on, on various sites. Now, if you want to go even further, and again, I, I'm not like recommending, recommending this, like you, you guys have to have a system where it's making money for you, or at least you've invested a finite amount of time in building a library. OK, so I don't recommend this like I keep on doing this no matter what. And hopefully it works someday. No, yes. Do this for like 12 full episodes and then measure your results. You want to look, turn around and say, OK, I, I made a ton of sales or you could turn around and say, OK, I invested all this time and now I have a great library that I can promote through SEO, or promote through ads or, or I have a resource built. I could create a course. Or, or whatever the, 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 so decide on what like your 12 week goal is. So you don't just, just in this bottomless pit. Cause I find that, uh, you know, Jenny, a lot of people talk about building systems and automating things and they're all very wise. You need to do this, but to the point of like creating this machine, 
that doesn't sell any ketchup, right? Like Heinz ketchup, like mastered. It wasn't Ford. It was Heinz ketchup that really mastered the conveyor belt. Ford kind of took that idea. But um, if it didn't sell ketchup, the conveyor belt wouldn't matter. So you've got to I love that analogy. I love it. Yes. You have to be selling ketchup. Yes. Yes. Lauren's asking a great question. Um, Lauren means, what do you mean by Facebook watch? Uploaded content from a business page. Yes. Uploaded content from a business page. Facebook, my prediction will be Facebook watch in two years. And this will include Facebook live. I believe AI softwares will even be extracting your two minute tip on their own. And and then showing the two minute tip on Facebook Watch. Interesting. And the viewer back over to Facebook Live. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, that that doesn't surprise me, Owen, because right now you can go back into your Facebook Live and and create clips from Facebook. Yes. Just your own and, clip. They make it so easy now. Even with Restream, now you have to have like the advanced plan, but with Restream, which is the software we're using right now, um, you can add it to Descript. Descript will edit out the ums, the o's, the blank spaces, add a headline on top and captions down below. With one click of a button, automatically you do nothing. Wow. Um, yeah. So Amazing. you can segments, you, you know. So yeah, the AI is getting really, really good. Lauren is saying I have so many issues with Streamlabs OBS. Look, I I like Streamlabs. I don't care for OBS anymore. I would really prefer that you get on to Restream and you can go check it out at epiclivevideo.com and and get an account there and when you do lauren like look us up email us and ask us how we can help you with the software we really, really want to see you integrate it but look facebook watch is the thing facebook watch is the thing and you want to leverage your live stream to get into facebook watch last question desiree asked earlier is live streaming versus pre-recorded i guess we kind of got into that but jenny share your thoughts as sort of a final word uh, live stream versus pre-recorded. What is your thought on the matter? Yeah, they're they're both good. They're both good. Uh, years ago, I was all in on live streaming, but now I can't do that anymore. They're both good. Uh, for me, the thing that tips live streaming over is, and I did mention this, but it's worth repeating. It, you know, watching right now, you know, watching Owen and I, this is not pre-recorded. Even on the replay watching it, you know that it wasn't pre-recorded. So you get to see who we really are in real time. I know that I have, uh, you know, stammered and even now it's saying I've stammered, I'm stammering, but now you get to see who I really am. And yeah. you get to see how, when Owen said, you know, is it Facebook, is Facebook live dead or is it you? And I blurted out laughing. That's the relationship. And you saw it in real time. There was no, you know, it wasn't scripted for yeah. me when it comes to building relationships with your ideal client and increasing the no like and trust factor, you can't do better than Facebook live yeah, or any live stream. I, I agree. And it's not, I really do agree. Like the show, a show like this. Yes. We want to improve our viewer counts, but really what we want guys is we want you to become committed to the restream software. That's the ultimate goal. What's your ultimate goal? Because it might be that that you're going to live stream in your group and the goal is just to help your, your existing clients get through your product or your course more successfully. You know, it may not be about the the, the views. Um, if you guys want to link to our Facebook group, I'm going to put it uh, in the, the thing right now. It's so funny because I knew as soon as I said that that I did not know um, what the Facebook group uh, link was, and I just kind of begged it off to Carlos, like let, let Carlos worry about it, but it's, um, facebook.com slash groups slash learn video marketing now. So it's facebook.com slash groups slash learn video marketing now. And that's all the time we have today. Jenny, one of our Jenny Q, Jennifer Quinn, I'm teasing <laughs> you at this point. Uh, great to have you on the show. How do we follow you and stay in touch with you? Oh, thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. I've had so much fun with you and with all the viewers. Um, you can find me 
my website is jennyqlive.com, jennyqlive.com. And I have links to all my socials there. And of course, my podcast that I'm so passionate about. Oh, it's great. literally my, uh, my, like, it's my, I'm my whole heart and soul is in that. So um, it's being seen with Jenny Q and you can, you can stream it everywhere. There's also a link to it on my website, but it's being okay. seen with Jenny Q. So I, I, you know what, I've known you for so long uh, and I've missed that you have a podcast or miss that that's what it was. I'm going to get it today and, and listen, I can't wait. Awesome. Thanks thank for you. spending time with us today. And thank you guys for sticking out. This is actually one of our biggest shows of the season. So thank you guys so much. We'll talk to you all very, very soon. I'm Owen video, and this is the business of life.